Today we are looking at a case from the early 1930s. So sit back as we go to New Zealand. William Alfred Bailey was born in Auckland on the 15th of July, 1906. He was raised by his respectable and hardworking parents named Frank and Constance on a farm in the Waikato district, which is located on the upper North Island of New Zealand. William was the second oldest of five children. He had an older sister and three younger brothers. He was an intelligent child and did well at school, but he had some strange, somewhat disturbing habits. He would trap birds and often mistreat cats and dogs. People soon started to notice that the young, studious boy seemed to have a macabre side to him. In June 1925, William's father purchased a farm in Papamoa, a few miles from the city of Tauranga. William moved there and started to work. He was joined by the rest of his family in 1926. He had grown into a confident, handsome young man who possessed great charm and charisma. He was popular and soon met a young lady named Phyllis Dorothy Palmer, who worked as a stenographer. They started courting and on the 29th of August, 1928, they married. The couple then went to live in Auckland, but on October the 1st, 1928, just two months after they married, William's 17 year old cousin named Elsie Walker, who had been living in Papamoa, went missing along with her uncle's car. The case of the missing girl dominated the newspapers in New Zealand. The car was soon located in a suburb of Auckland, but there was no sign of Elsie. Then on the 5th of October, five days after she had gone missing, a young man out walking discovered her body under some bushes about eight miles from where the car had been found. When the body was discovered, it bore no visible signs of violence, but the subsequent medical examination showed that the deceased had a fractured skull. Pathologists, however, were unable to determine the exact cause of death. They did believe that the blow to the head had been a deliberate act and that Elsie had probably been murdered. The case was investigated and William Alfred Bailey soon became a person of significant interest to the police. They investigated his movements at the time of the disappearance and over the next few months he was questioned and interviewed. A key belonging to him was found in the car and even though he had only recently married, it was noted that he was living apart from his wife in a boarding house. The couple were also struggling financially. When police spoke to members of William's family, they all gave statements confirming that he was in Auckland when Elsie disappeared. After an extensive police investigation, there was not enough evidence to charge William with the death of his cousin, Elsie Walker. Many people in the country found it very hard to believe that a young woman who could not drive could manage to steal a car and drive it 200 miles at night along mainly small narrow lanes before abandoning it, walking about eight miles, whereupon she died, either from exposure or exhaustion. They suspected foul play, but the police had no more suspects and no conclusive proof that Elsie had been murdered. While the police investigation had been going on, Bill and Phyllis Bailey moved to a dairy farm in the small rural community of Ruawaro, not far from the town of Huntley. They arrived there in November 1928. It was a good time for them to leave Auckland, as they were able to remove themselves from the publicity and the police inquiry into Elsie's mysterious death. The farm was next door to a farm that was owned by Samuel and Christabel Lakey. William had known the Lakeys for many years, as Samuel had worked as a carpenter for William's father at his properties in Caraca and Papamoa. It was in fact William's father Frank who had sold the farm to the Lakeys. Life was going well for William and Phyllis. They both worked hard and made the farm a success. And by 1933, Phyllis had given birth to two boys. So they now had a family of their own. It was also a good time to be a farmer in New Zealand. New technologies had emerged, such as electrified milking sheds, and there had been a lot of research into how to improve the returns of pasture and stock. By 1929, 
major state hydroelectric projects had finished at Harofenawa and Waikato. This meant that the majority of urban dwellers and farmers had access to electricity, and by 1931, the country generated 40 times more electricity than it did 20 years earlier in 1911. At the farm, the family lived in a nice house, and William was well known in the local community. Everyone believed that he was a devoted family man, and he was often seen enjoying time with his wife Phyllis and his two children. The Baileys also got on well with their neighbours, Samuel and Christabel Lakey, but the relationship between them deteriorated when they had a dispute about one of the farm boundaries. William requested that he cut a piece of the Lakey's boundary fence so he could access some land owned by another neighbour. This was quite important for William, as it would give him access to the main road. The Lakeys, however, didn't agree with the plan, and an argument pursued. As the argument got more heated, Christabel Lakey, who by this time had become very irate, looked at William and shouted, Your guilty conscience is prickling you. You murdered Elsie Walker, and we expect the same. The whole event was witnessed by a neighbour. Eventually, without the issue being resolved, William returned to his farm, and the Lakeys slowly walked back to their house. On the 16th of October, 1933, a neighbouring farmer noticed that the Lakeys' cows had not been milked, so he made his way over to their property to see if everything was all right. However, there was no one home. He thought it strange and decided to look around to see if he could find them. As he approached the duck pond, he saw something in the water, and as he moved closer, he realised it was the body of Christabel Lakey, and it looked like she had drowned. He phoned the police, who arrived and inspected the scene. Strangely, however, there was no sign of Christabel's husband, Samuel. Detectives started to investigate the crime. Speculation circled that Samuel may have killed his wife and disappeared. But on the 18th of October, the extensive police search resulted in the discovery of some human blood on some old wheels and a sledge found near the boundary between the Lakeys and Williams farms. The following day, October the 19th, the police started to search William Bailey's farm. Guns that had gone missing from the Lakeys house were found buried in a swamp on William Bailey's property. A cartridge was also found in William's clothing along with parts of a watch, which was apparently remarkably similar to the one that had been owned by Samuel Lakey. The police considered that it was highly likely that William Bailey had murdered his neighbours following the argument regarding the boundary fence. They found a large drum, which seemed to have been heated to a very high temperature. This was very interesting for the police, as a witness had said that he had seen smoke coming from William Bailey's cowshed. Another witness said that they had previously seen William around the area of the swamp after dark. When the police sent a shovel found in the cowshed to a forensic laboratory for tests, it was discovered that the shovel had traces of charred bone fragments. The police put William Bailey under surveillance. But in December, two months after Christabel Lakey had been found dead in her pond, he suddenly disappeared. His wife Phyllis found a suicide note and contacted the police. William was soon found, however, alive and well in Auckland. The search at the Bailey's property continued, and human bones and items of clothing were found in the garden. There was evidence for the suit belonging to Samuel Lakey, and a pair of boots belonging to a friend had been burnt. The police now considered that they had enough evidence, and on the 10th of January, 1934, William Bailey was arrested and charged with the murder of Samuel and Christabel Lakey. The trial of William Alfred Bailey began in Auckland on the 21st of May, 1934. The Crown told the court that following months of a bitter dispute between the accused and Mr and Mrs Lakey, William Bailey had gone to the Lakey's property and knocked Christabel unconscious before drowning her in the duck pond, and that he had also shot Samuel and taken his body back to his farm on his sledge, where he burnt it. During the trial, 
The press filled their front pages with all the details of the goings on in courts. The public were fascinated with the case. As in 1933, the New Zealand police force had investigated a total of 22 murder cases and five cases of manslaughter, some of which were still unsolved. One case in particular that stood out was that of an Auckland taxi driver named James Blair who had been shot. Some speculated that William Bailey may have been responsible for his death. In court, the prosecution could not produce any witnesses who actually saw the crime and all the evidence they presented was circumstantial. It took them more than three weeks to present their case. The defence called no evidence and spent four days discrediting the prosecution's case, which was mainly made up of photographs, pathology reports and witnesses confirming that the accused and the victims frequently argued. When the trial ended, the jury was sent out to deliberate, but an hour later they returned. When the judge asked the jury foreman if he found the defendant guilty or not guilty, the foreman replied, guilty, and the judge sentenced William Alfred Bailey to death. The defence appealed the sentence and petitioned for it to be commuted. These appeals, however, were unsuccessful. William Bailey also protested his innocence, but on the 20th of July, 1934, he was hanged at the Mount Eden prison in Auckland. His wife Phyllis married again and died in November 1986, aged 79. The death of William's cousin, Elsie Walker, is still unresolved and neither the case nor the exact circumstances of how she died have ever been determined. Mrs Christabel Lakey was buried in an unmarked grave in Huntley Cemetery and after the trial the little that was recovered of Samuel was put in storage and stored in a police museum. They were occasionally used in training to show that a whole body isn't needed to prove that a murder has occurred. As technology moved on, the remains were no longer required, so were placed in the museum at Koawi Tangata, and in 2015, they were buried in the same grave as Christabel. As there were no known descendants of the deceased, police erected a memorial plaque over the grave. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for listening. As per usual, please leave any comments or feedback you may have, and I will see you in the next brief case.